Hello. Now, we are well over 100 days into the current horror in Gaza. Now, many of us, of course, are aware of the hideous death toll caused directly from violence. That's, of course, Israeli missiles, bullets. Uh, the truly grotesque truth is that, generally speaking, in war, the vast majority of the final death toll is not made up of those who died directly because of the violence, but because of other factors, that being including, for example, the collapse of the healthcare system the lack of availability of food, and of course, fresh water. Now, with that in mind, I'm really delighted to be joined by Pedro Aruca. Uh, Aru How do I say that? Pedro Aruca. Aruca Agudo. Thank you very Arroco much. Aguido. Aruca Agudo, um, who is the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights to Safe Drinking Water and Sanitation. Pedro, it's a big honour to speak to you. How are you doing? Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> um, I just want to start with the question of water. Obviously, as people know, one of the basic building blocks of life. Um, without uh, access to fresh water, humans die very quickly. Um, now, in terms of Gaza, before the war began, can you tell me what the situation was regarding the access of 2.2 million or so Palestinians living in Gaza before the war? Obviously, the longest siege in modern history that they've been exposed to what was the situation in terms of access to to water can you explain what that means because a lot of people just think drinking water but of course we need water for lots of things well um you have to take into account that uh, the people living in gaza is uh, as you said 2.3 million people around uh, but the majority of these people uh, most and uh, around 60% of these people are not living there because they want to live there. They are refugees uh, displaced forced, forcely uh, by the, the Israeli arm, uh, the Israel uh, in, the, in the last time, you know, and forced to live in uh, refugee camps in the, in, the, in the Gaza Strip. First, this question. In a, a so crowded space, a small piece of uh, territory. Uh, so the other question is: All these people, as the only uh, source of fresh water, uh, is the coastal aquifer that is shared in in in, uh, in fact also with with Israel. Uh, but for the the people in uh, the Palestinian people in Gaza, is the only uh, source of fresh water. This aquifer. Uh, has a, a, um, the replenishment, natural replenishment of the aquifer is more or less uh, 60 cubic hectometers per year uh, and less and less with the climate change. During the last uh, f uh, 16 years with the blockade, uh, they were obliged to uh, uh, pump three times more than three times more water than the water uh, is replenishing in a natural way. Uh, so these has uh, provoked uh, uh, the, the salination, intense salination by seawater intrusion during this time. Um, on the other hand, uh, the sanitation is very difficult uh, because uh, the, um, most of the materials needed for, uh, for um, uh, making uh, drinkable the water and for for for, for depuring for treating uh, the waste water uh, is considered by Israel as a double use materials and is blocked is not allowed so uh, the sanitation is uh, there is a lack of sanitation during this time there is this 15 16 years no the the result is a intense and progressive um, mm, contamination with fecal contamination of the aquifer. So, in fact, during this time, the population had no the possibility of employing the aquifer as drinking water. Well, they employed because they were forced, but it was not drinking water properly. The only source of drinking water were the water provided by the two big plants, the desalination plants built by the European Union and UNICEF. But with this water, it was just possible to provide, to supply 40% of the population. So this was the situation before the war. Once the war began, the situation were more uh, were aggravated, of course. But so let's talk about that because 
clearly then Gaza's population was already very vulnerable for, for lots of reasons because of the siege, but including, of course, water. Um, what Now we've had the mass displacement of the population of Gaza. Obviously, the vast majority of um, over 85 percent have been displaced forcibly from their homes into an ever smaller corner in southern Gaza. Um, what's happened now in terms of access, people's access to water in the here and now? What's the what's the kind of situation in terms of what water people can actually access? That's that's clean and safe. Um, and what are the health impacts for that for different people as well? Because I mean, for yeah. example, pregnant women. Um, women, yeah. have, you know, about twenty thousand women have given birth or so since the war began. What? So, t tell me about that. Well, you have to take into account that Gaza is a very flat territory. Uh, so, uh, in order to make uh, uh, to 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 make working uh, to work with the the the, the supply network, um, um, is not possible by by gravity. Yeah, you need to pump the water. So from the moment that the energy is collapsed uh, uh, and they have no more energy, uh, the uh, network collapsed also. So people had known these 2.3 uh, million people didn't have water in the top uh, at home or not close to the house uh, from the moment of the war began nearly. Uh, so that's, that means that the people, mainly women and children, has to go for the, to the streets looking for water in the middle of the bombing, you know? Uh, this is the situation. At the end, they can get some, some amount of water. I suppose they had some reserves of uh, uh, water. Uh, in a moment, uh, one of the plants was able to, to work at 5% of the, uh, you know, intensity they can. Uh, and uh, they have some little water but mixed or directly from the aquifer. The aquifer is absolutely contaminated with, uh, with uh, fecal contamination because, uh, of, of course, also the, the plants uh, for treatment that there exist are also stopped uh, because of the, uh, the collapse of energy. Uh, so at present, um, the water they have is contaminated water and salty water. Um, UNICEF gave me some days ago the data of uh, more than 70,000 children with diarrhea per week. That means a situation in which without medical help uh, you have dehydration processes that will be accelerated if the only water you have is very salty water. Uh, so I'm sure, but I have not the data, that means uh, thousands of victims but silent victims. You know, uh, is, is uh, like uh, I used to say, is uh, uh, this lack of drinking water, not just the amount of water, but the quality of water, is, is uh, like a, a silent bomb, uh, but is lethal, the same that the bombs uh, um, uh, they are employing. No? Uh, and uh, it is important to say that. Uh, um, is so that the, the, the combination of um, lack of, uh, of uh, food, lack of drinking water, contamination, and lack of medicines and medical health. I mean, at the moment, we already have a official death toll, which is absolutely hideous, um, which is over 25,000 who've been killed. Um, many of them children but that that's an underestimate because it excludes those buried under the rubble so it's well yeah. over uh, well over 30,000 and many of those it will I have to be said so I won't go into graphic detail but maybe won't be may, maybe never identified because of decomposition yeah the, the hungry dogs of Gaza I mean it, I don't again want to go into too much detail but it's, it's a horrific situation but but that the point is that isn't it the case that in war generally speaking it isn't actually the violence that kills generally speaking most people it's as i've said before it's the collapse of things like as you mentioned lack of medicine but also things like water so are we already seeing gazans dying because of a lack of availability of water and is that is that not included in the official death toll is there basically an extra number of people currently dying because of access to water that we're not even including in what is already an underestimate of those who are killed of course i'm sure 
Um, I have asked about this, but there is no data. I have no uh, data on this. But if you can imagine, uh, more than 77,000 uh, uh, children with diaries, what is the proportion of people that can die in, in this situation? And it begins uh, to have the, the risk of, di of dysentery and other epidemies uh, in a so crowded territory without any kind of hygiene possibilities. Uh, so that could be uh, really a bomb of uh, an arm of uh, uh, massive destruction, but silent bomb, silent uh, uh, weapon, you know? Um, and uh, we are not, uh, you can imagine, imagine yourself, your family without water in these conditions. Because if you don't uh, eat too much for one month, it's possible to continue to live. But, but it's possible. But water is necessary every day for everything and every day. So the situation is terrible. I mean, we've heard reports that the Israeli army may flood the tunnels, they say the tunnel network, which belongs to Hamas. Yeah. And what could that mean in terms of the aquifer, which you mentioned? And what can that mean in terms of the conditions that sustain life? If those tunnels are flooded with seawater, well, could that mean the aquifer then is completely undrinkable? And what does that mean in practice? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, if this, if this with this measure, is evident that the social impact for the future will be a disaster. Uh, because, uh, as I insist, the only... Uh, source of fresh water for the people living in Gaza uh, is the coastal aquifer. It, uh, I said you before, it, it reminds me, it reminds me uh, of that uh, terrible measure now uh, in ancient times, uh, which consisted uh, of sowing uh, land with salt, the, 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 the lands of the, uh, the enemy. Salting, uh, yeah, the expression salting the earth. Salt in the earth. Okay, <laughs> excuse me. Thank you very much. Once uh, the, the enemy was defeated, no, in order to make it, to make uh, life uh, in those territory impossible for the future. Now, um, looking to the future, this is the question. Um, we should, we should imagine uh, a future of peace. <laughs> but for this, water in the aquifer is necessary. No, so we need precisely. Uh, restoring uh, this coastal aquifer as the base for the future, as the base for the people who need to, to, to live, uh, to have the life in this territory. If this is, uh, if the aquifer is definitely salinated, we can need decades for recovering uh, this, this source of, of life. Uh, so in this sense, uh, is in, in, in tune, is in line uh, with uh, this uh, the, the, the denunciation of genocide that we are doing from the from the United Nations uh, rapporteur, the majority, uh, almost uh, all the the United Nations rapporteur and experts is in 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 line with this perspective of making impossible the life for the future for the future generations. I mean, just just lastly on that. So, in terms of as you know, UN special rapporteurs, I've interviewed one of your colleagues, Francesca Albanese, who is mm -hmm. for those who don't know, do check out the interview I did with her. But she's the UN special rapporteur um, on human rights in the occupied territories of Palestine. Um, but along so, many of you, and this was back even mid October, you issued a warning of the risk of genocide in Gaza. Is it true then that? Because, again, there's been so much focus clearly on bombs, and that's actually part of it because you destroy the infrastructure. Um, you know, I mean, there's lots of elements to this as well. It's agriculture being destroyed. Obviously, there's a huge number of pillars to this. But could this prove to be one of the biggest, if not maybe the biggest, risk of of genocide, which is if you, which is Israel denying a civilian population who is already has, you know, lack of access to medical care, lack of access to food, um, injured, pregnant, you know, a whole range of people with underlying health conditions. Could this prove the absolutely the most important pillar potentially of genocide and of a repeated threat by many Israeli ministers, which is to ethnically cleanse Gaza, to make Gaza inhospitable 
So you force people out and those who remain die. Yes, uh, we are denouncing this situation uh, with, with, with the respect to the specific question in which I have uh, my, my work is water and sanitation. Uh, I invite you to read just the Article 7 of the Statute of Rome uh, with respect to uh, crime against humanity. Uh, and this Article 7 uh, explicitly uh, characterizes as a crime, crime against humanity uh, in the way of extermination when uh, food, uh, medic medicines, and basic issues for life such as water are blocked. Uh, uh, so, this uh, crime of extermination is in the way, of course, together with all the other questions you have mentioned. Um, it's not just a punctual question or an attack. Uh, it's something that is, uh, has an approach. And the approach, when uh, authorities of the army and the ministers are talking about even uh, about children as sons and daughters of the darkness. Uh, this kind of expressions, and no one say anything against this, from the government is inviting to the genocide. Uh, so we cannot re remain uh, passive before this. It's very important, and it's very important the Israeli opinion, the people are from Israel uh, are also, even if it is a minority, uh, denouncing this situation now is not acceptable uh, for the whole world and democratic world particularly. So I'm just very finally on that for clarity. Do, is, is it your view that Israel is knowingly committing a crime against humanity on the question of access to water? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think before uh, there were also uh, crimes against the human rights to water and sanitation before the war, as I explained, and I explained in my last um, thematic report before uh, the General Assembly uh, the, uh, of the UN in, in, in New York, before the beginning of the war, I was talking about Gaza in a moment, in a, just a paragraph, you know, uh, talking about Gaza as a concentration camp without precedent in the world, because the people had no the, the possibility of having uh, for guarantee, guarantee the, the safe drinking water and sanitation. But now the situation is, uh, of course, uh, uh, terrible, uh, much worse. And uh, yes, I think we are in front of a genocide process if we don't are able, if we are not able to stop the war. Pedro Grimsdorf. Um, many of the interviews we're, we're currently doing obviously are pretty shocking, and I think this is. I think needs spelling out because, as I've said, I think understandably there's been so much focus on the the specific deaths from violence, but this could potentially be a source of far more death, um, and also part of a you know it's not conspiratorial to talk about the uh, the open strategy of many Israeli politicians to make Gaza inhospitable for the Palestinian population to drive them out. So it's really important that we talk about this and spell this out for those watching, listening, whatever. Do share this. Press like and subscribe. We're going to get the message out, the danger, uh, which Pedro uh, spells out. But Pedro, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you to you.